in the Bible that help us to understand how God is in charge in Amen. good times and in bad times. So turn with me in the book of Romans chapter 8. Paul's letter Paul's letter to the Romans book of Romans chapter 8 <clears throat> I'm going to read from verse 18 onwards there are three important Bible verses that I want to talk to you about number one is Romans chapter 8 verse 18 onwards so if you have a pen or pencil, you can underline your Bible verse today so that you will go home and meditate upon it because it's not enough to come to church and listen to the message. It is important to note it so that you can go home and your leisure time, you open the Bible and read and study and meditate and allow the Spirit of God to help you to soak yourself with the Word of God. Every time Hallelujah. I prepare a message because the Spirit of God is just dealing with me. You know, I read Bible, but there are times that God just pinpoints some of the passages for me to study. And so these are the three important passages that I want you to understand what God has for us. Let me read verse 18, Romans 8, 18. Paul writes, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory mm -hmm. that will be revealed in us. Amen. Verse 19, it says, The creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought it into the glorious freedom of Christ, children of God. Now, underline the word glorious freedom. You know, if you look at it on the, when you come in and the board outside, it says, celebrate freedom, come and worship with us. You know, come and worship God with us. And it was Brother Charlie put it out there. And I do not know why he put it, but it brought me to Bible passages that talk about the freedom that we have in the Bible. And so here is a freedom, the real freedom, called the glorious freedom. So Paul writes in verse 18, he says, I consider that our present suffering. So what are the things are suffering? According to Paul's statement in this passage, the whole world, the whole nature is under turmoil. Right? Few few days ago, there was a big... Uh, uh, boom in the middle of the ocean, right? It brought out that so many uh, tsunamis and dist destruction to the closer uh, places. Even California, the some of the path, you know, um, ocean shores were uh, affected by. So all over the world, the nature is just in turmoil. It's going through these difficulties. And that is frustration. Paul writes in verse 20, he says, For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be liberated or freed from its bondage to decay. See, the whole world is going towards decay. Praise the Lord. I saw a person, he took a nice big apple, and put it in a container and put it inside there and filled it with water and left it for days to see what is going to happen. He left it right there and had a camera just running for 24 hours and it recorded that uh, how it's this apple, the beautiful looking apple in the water just begin to disintegrate, you know, slowly. And within 150 days, this apple that was in the water begin to just go bad to worse and to worse and to worse. It's just, you will look at it in 100 to 150 days, this apple, it just, you, can, you cannot even say that is that was an apple. Because that is what the nature is. Nature is under frustration, under great turmoil. 
So when God created the Garden of Eden, it was everything was perfect. That is what in the Genesis you read, God said everything was perfect. So when sin and the disobedience came into this world, the destruction happened because God cursed. God cursed and punished Adam and Eve and including the serpent that was just deceiving. So the punishment, the curse started from the beginning until now the whole world is going towards frustration and the frustration is going to lead towards what? Bondage. The whole world is under bondage. They want to be liberated from this bondage. To what? It says it will be brought to glorious freedom. So it is decaying. That is why some people think, okay, the world is decaying. All right? People are just making this world nasty. They are pulling out oil and just making this, you know, sea and everything is just nasty. And they are making all this plastic and throwing the plastic everywhere and making this place nasty. And so the whole world, they look at it and say, it's getting old. So what do you do? You leave the world and go to Mars. <laughs> <laughs> That's what there are, there are people are thinking, okay, where can I go? I can go to Mars and start new. You know, I will go and colonize Mars. And they thought to go and colonize the the moon. You know, they well, that's why in 19, uh, what is 69? <laughs> 69, they went and just, you know, stopped in the moon and they looked for a place. Okay, they we can come back here and they came back. And then there are several people that start sending to satellites towards the moon. You know how many satellites are roaming around around the world? About more than 600,000. Not 600. 6,000 of them are just roaming around all over the world. You know, surrounding the globe. And that more in surrounding in the moon already. Do you know there are people who are sending stuff not only to, uh, over the earth, but also towards the moon. And now they are sending to Mars. And they are sending all these things. And everywhere you go, there you are. Praise the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wherever you are, there you are. You're not going to stop the decaying of what God has done. Okay. What God has said, it is going to happen. According to Peter, he said, everything is going to be burned. Right? And so it is, it is a frustration. It is going through a process. They want to be liberated. The whole universe wants to be liberated from this curse that is coming. And so Paul says, not only the whole world, but us, the children of God, also involved in it. We are also uh, being frustrated day after day. I don't know how many of you have the heart you're longing for. You know, for the presence of Jesus. You know, you want to be just leaving this dirty old world and just go into the presence of the Lord, glorified body, because we will not have any more pain, any more sorrow, any more tears, and then we will be with the Lord forever. Our heart is longing for that. We want that liberation, that freedom. The Bible calls this the glorious freedom. We will be freed from this bondage. Hallelujah. Yeah. So Paul says that when I consider that glory that I'm going to have, and the suffering that I am going through today because of the gospel, he says, if I put it there in, in the balance, in apples and oranges, you know, they say apples and oranges, you cannot compare it, right? Oranges are different, apples are different. You know, you cannot put it all together. It's all two different fruits. It's the same way Paul says that the world and the troubles that we are having, I consider this trouble in this world that I'm having, not only me, all my church believers, all my people that I have preached the gospel, all of us are going through this, this trouble in us. And when you compare it to what is going to happen, the, what you call the glorious freedom we are going to enjoy in the presence of the Lord, he cannot even compare it. That is what Paul says right here. So he says, I consider that our present suffering are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. A day is going to come. We are going to turn to be like the Lord. Hallelujah. Bible Hallelujah. says we do not know how, but Bible says the only thing we know is that we will be like him. Amen. We will be like him. How was Jesus? 
when Jesus was crucified and he died on the cross, when he was buried on the third day, when he raised from the dead and he walked out of the tomb and when he appeared to, you know, all the disciples, it's a glorified body. It's a glorified body. He just walked into the room, not through the door. He can just walk in. Hallelujah. And say, you guys have anything to eat? That means even in the glorified body, he can still eat and drink with them and have the fellowship with them. The glorified body, you're not going to miss anything here. If you like steak here, praise the Lord. There's going to be great food out there. Hallelujah. We are going to, you're going to have, you know, angels serving us. Praise the Lord. That is going to be awesome. So Paul says, right now, the problem I have, the troubles I have, everywhere I go, I've been beaten. Everywhere I go, they put me in prison. Everywhere I go, they, they stone me. And if I take a trip and, and there is storm that, that pulls me into the water and I'm naked, I was hungry, I was thirsty. He says, I, I have all these difficulties. And then Paul stops and says, if I consider the present suffering, Mm. It's not even worth comparing to the glory that we are going to receive. Amen. Oh, wow. wow. So when you, when you compare that, this is like nothing. Praise the Lord. This, this trouble is like nothing. This sickness is like nothing. The financial trouble is like nothing. Amen. The joblessness and this family problem is like nothing. All the things that I'm going through right now on this planet Earth. This pain and this suffering, when I compare to the glory that is going to, I'm going to receive, it's just Hallelujah. not even worth comparing. <laughs> In other words, glory. Paul is trying to say that don't try to get settled here. Praise the Lord. This is a temporary thing. Mm -hmm. Everything that you see is what? Temporary. Everything that you see is temporary. You know better because we are living in an area where every season there's fire. Yesterday I was sitting in the office and suddenly I saw a great big smoke coming out from there, just behind this house. I said, is there some fire there? <laughs> I, I, th I thought, okay, it's going to, if it's burned a little more, I'm going to call 911, right? But then it's, you know, just keep on going, this smoke. And then uh, it stopped. So it was a controlled fire. Somebody was burning something. I do not know whether it is allowed to burn things here. But in Missouri, you are allowed to burn your trash. I enjoyed burning the trash. <laughs> when we were in Missouri, because they put a big hole under the ground and they throw all this, you know, uh, garbage over there. And you are allowed to burn, you know, because it's just a plain, uh, what do you call the hot land. And you can do that. And, but I don't know about California. You cannot burn things here, right? This and time of year, this, yeah. this time of year, okay. So they were, they were smoke. I said, whoa, I had to, I had to watch that. Every season we come across fire. Even today, you know, there are firefighters trying to fight the fire in Route 1 in, in the south, right? Mm -hmm. How many of you know that? No. Yeah, there's this fire going on, you right. know? We think that there's uh, enough rain that we got and there's snow and that we got and it's not going to burn. Um, fire have a way of burning things, right? If you put anything, if you throw anything in the fire, it's going to burn. burn. So the whole world is in frustration and pain and sorrow, but yet the whole world is just looking for a liberation. When Jesus comes, he's going to liberate and set everything free. Mm -hmm. And a time is going to come, and yeah. this whole world is going to be gone. Not even come to remembrance. The Bible says he will create a new heaven and new earth. Amen. So keep your eyes on what Paul says when you have troubles on this earth. You know, it is painful. When you go through sickness, it is painful. When you go through pain, it is painful. You say sickness, pain, and misery, disappointments, and, and poverty, mistreatments, and sorrow, and persecution, and trouble. All these are part of being a human. You have to go through it. No one is immune to it. Praise the Lord. Yes. Just because you are elected to be a president, do you think he will not have any trouble in his body? Uh -huh. Right? Think about it. somebody elected to be the governor. Just because he's a governor, he's not going to get sick. Mm. Everyone is what? 
is going to get sick. Everyone is, is immune to this situation. So no one is, you know, that I cannot, I don't, I will not have all this trouble. All of us are prone to get anything in this world. And so, but in spite of that, Paul says, I'm going to keep my eyes focused on the Lord because what is going to come, the trouble that I have is not even worth comparing to. The second passage that I want to point to you is turn to 1 Peter. Now, Peter is also writing in his epistle to us. 1 Peter chapter 1 and look at verse Six, not only Paul went through trials and prison and imprisonment and pain and, and uh, difficulties, but also Peter. Peter also was the early apostle and he was the leader of the church and he was uh, writing to the church. This is what he writes. Look at chapter one of First Peter. Let me read from verse uh, five onwards. It says, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while. Though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. This is what Peter writes. Now, you are suffering. Now you are in trial. You know, in the early church, they were in trial. You remember Paul, when he, he was Saul, when he uh, was not a Christian at that time, he was so vehemently against Christians, he was giving trouble to all Christians. And when the persecution came in the early church, all the believers, they left Jerusalem and went everywhere because Paul was in charge of bringing all the men and women who were called believers to put them in prison and torture them. That is what Paul was, Saul was doing. But later you will see that God even called Saul and he became a, a, a gospel preacher and he went and preached everywhere. Everywhere he went, he went through the same kind of persecution and trials that he gave to early time Christians. But persecution and trials were there. No one was immune to it. Peter, including all the apostles, went through trials after trials and persecution after persecution. So uh, if, you, if you study the history of Christianity, you will come across the persecution even today. In 2022, there are churches or Christians are being bombarded with all kinds of troubles. Even today in this country, that you can feel that things are changing, right? Not for good, for, for worse. And, and so what do you do? In the time of trials, Bible says this. Peter is writing 2,000 years ago. He writes this in verse, uh, look at verse 6. He says, Though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. All kinds of trials mean sickness, pain, misery, disappointments, and poverty, mistreatments, and sorrow, and persecution, and trouble. You can include all that. And he says you will go through these trials in your life, all kinds of trials. Look at verse 7. This is what we are going to learn from it. He says, these have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by the fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Christ Jesus is revealed. He is saying the same thing in a different way. He says, yes, Paul says, when I consider what I'm going through right now, it's not even worth comparing to what is going to come for me. It is the li glorious liberation, glorious freedom I'm going to get. And then Peter says that our, we are going through all these trials at this present time for a little while. Because this is all going to be over before you know it. Because then we will be with the Lord. He says this. Why we have these troubles and trials? He says it is a test for our faith. Says these have come, verse 7, these have come so that your faith may be proved genuine. You see, when pandemic comes, 
lot of people, you know, stop coming to church. Do you know why? Because, you know what, I don't want to be hanging out with people who are going to be getting sick and so But they go to all the other places for everything else, right? Yeah. yeah. They go to Costco, they go to Winco, they go to stores and malls, and they do everything normal. But coming to church is becoming a problem. Why? Because for them, seeking God first is not the priority. Priority have yeah. to be there. That is why I really appreciate all of you guys because you you are giving honor and glory to God. You you give Him the first place in your life. That is why you are here in the house of God. Bible says this. Jesus said, "Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you." Amen. If you honor God, if you honor God by giving Him the first place in your life, the result will be. You are, you are showing God that I'm serious about my faith in you, Lord. I'm serious about your death on the cross. I'm serious, serious about the promise that you are going to bring salvation Amen. for me. A day is going to come that I'm going to leave this body here and I'm going to be with you. Yes. And that hope is because I'm taking it seriously and I want to follow you, right? Amen. Paul Amen. says, Peter says this, is our momentary troubles this a little while that we are going through all these trials and when we see why god is allowing these trials is that so that we can be strengthened in our faith amen if this pandemic is not going to take jesus out of you <laughs> praise the lord mm -hmm. and you are getting stronger in the lord jesus and that is your showing to the lord lord i mean business i want to hold whatever happens for you you are my savior and nothing else. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because the troubles are going, not going to stop. Do you know that? Right. It's like those waves of the sea. You see one big wave come in and you say, okay, it's gone. And then before you know, another, another wave is what? Falling behind this. You know? So waves are keep on coming. So also as long as we live in this world, one problem comes and goes. Another problem will come and go. And uh, no wonder if you are continually watching the television and news media. And you will be wondering that they are making all these waves just bombarded to your ears. That is why most of the time I don't even want to hear what this media is saying. I wanted to know what God is doing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What God is doing in my life because he is in charge. Not the politicians are in charge. If you take all the politicians out for one month, nobody will know. The world will keep on going. Hallelujah. Everything will keep on going. So God is in charge of all of our life. So Peter says, for a little while we have these trials, and if you hold on to it, it will prove that your faith is genuine, and it will bring glory and honor and praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, our strong faith is going to show people around us that no matter what, we are going to hold on to God. You know, they went to synagogue and somebody was shooting in the synagogue. Can you believe that? They went there to a place where people are very quiet and seeking God. Somebody went there with the intention to what? To oh, kill people. God. So world is, is going to do whatever the world can to destroy the freedom that we have. That is why we have to celebrate the freedom and worship the Lord together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have to. We have to have fellowship together. Amen. I was thinking, you know, um, if it is possible to, to have fellowship again every Sunday after the service, you know, it'll be great, right? It's not a great big cooking. It's just maybe a soup and, and uh, crackers. Just after the service, we all just go there and sit and talk because we, we don't have the evening service and nobody comes to the Bible study Wednesdays and all that we have is Sunday morning. Why can't we have something, you know, after the service? We can just go over there and sit and just drink a, what do you call it? Eat a little bit of soup, simple soup and what? Crackers. The crackers, right? And, and it, it'll be great. You know, it's not going to be a big, great, big job. Each, each person can take turn. And so that it'll be, we have to enhance our fellowship. 
Amen. If we don't enhance our fellowship, you know, uh, by ourselves, we cannot survive. We need each other because these times are very, very difficult times. How can we recharge each other? We can only recharge by fellowshipping together. Hallelujah. So I'm thinking about it. I'm not promising that, but for probably from the uh, beginning of February, we will be planning to have every Sunday after the service, we will have some soup and crackers okay and that is donated by pastor praise the lord so we don't have to worry about it i will donate it and we will just have fellowship together because just for the sake of having fellowship all right yes. hallelujah yeah. it is important church it is, it is important yeah. because when the time gets tough the tough will what keep going yeah. <laughs> so that we have to do whatever it takes yeah. to keep the fellowship together to do the things that together so that we will be just fired for the lord yeah. it is like oh, this yeah. if you put just one piece of wood you know for the fireplace it's going it's not going to burn it takes few pieces of wood together and when it burns and you put push it all together and the fire gets stronger and stronger yeah. that is the same way with a spiritual fellowship together. We need to be hanging out together no matter what. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The third Bible verse that I want you to look into is in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. So we saw Romans chapter 8 and then 1 Peter chapter 1. And now I want you to turn to the 2 Corinthians and look at chapter 4 where Paul is writing again to the Corinthian church. See, he went and started this Corinthian church. He, he did a great work there in his missionary journey. And uh, when he is away from Corinth and he writes letter to the Corinthian church, and this is the second letter that we have recorded. So 2 Corinthians, look at chapter 4. I'm going to read verse uh, from 16 onwards. This is the third Bible verse I want you to go home and meditate upon. It says, 2 Corinthians 4, 16. Mm -hmm. Therefore, do not lose heart. Mm -hmm. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweigh them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Amen. Here is Paul writing to the churches. The churches are going to go through some persecution. Thessalonica has gone through persecution, Philippi and Ephesus and all these places that Paul went and preached and the early church believers they went through persecution. Some were put in prison, some were beaten, some were tortured. You know, all these are going to happen but Paul as an apostle he is encouraging them what to do. When you are in difficult situation what do you do? Just some people in difficult times they just quit everything. They throw the towel and say, I quit. That is why a lot of people don't want to come to church back and because they quit. But that is not the way that we need to do because we have a job that is just coming together and fellowshipping together. And he says this in verse 17, for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory. Every time you are, you are uh, what do you call, persevering, Every time you are just keep on going, right? You could have just given up, but you are not. And you are keep on going. Even you are, you know, by yourself, you are keep on going. And that is what Paul is writing. He says that our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory for far outweigh them all. So what do you do? What is the only thing that can help you to keep on and keep it on? If I begin to see things... What is going on in the world? And if I hear all the news that the news media is spreading out, if I depend on that, I will fail just like that. And that is why I have Paul says, you have to fix your eyes on Jesus. Amen. The answer for our trouble is what? 
no matter what you go through, family problems, financial problems, joblessness, and health problems, anything that you are going through, just put it all in one side and say, I'm going to focus on Jesus because yeah. he is my answer. All oh, these are temporary. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. In our life, Ruby and I, we have gone through some difficulties. When we got married, you know, in the beginning of our ministry, we didn't have much. Uh, you know, and we had two two boys, two children to grow, and uh, there were times that Ruby was sick, and I didn't have that much money, and so I had to choose between getting a medicine for her or getting food for my boys. Right? Mm -hmm. There were difficult times, but the difficult times was there for a period of time, and then what? Mm -hmm. It moved on. Praise the Lord. We are not going to stay there, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Difficulties will come, but difficulties will pass by. Amen. Troubles come and troubles pass by. Sickness come and sickness is passed by. And all these are temporary. They will just keep moving, keep moving. And we had to keep our eyes focused on the Lord. That is what uh, Paul says. So keep our eyes fixed on the Lord Jesus. Amen. Why? He says in verse 18, so we fix our eyes on what is seen. Not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. When we focus Hallelujah. our spiritual uh, focus on the Lord Jesus, we go beyond our natural. We go to the spiritual. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. If you stay in the natural, you see things naturally. But you go beyond that and you go higher than this natural things and you go spiritually and you look at Jesus spiritually. Hallelujah. You just feel that he is present here with us. When you go to that realm of spirituality, you will feel because you know that the promise that Jesus made that I'm not going to leave you nor forsake you. And you will have the confidence you can experience the presence of Jesus hovering over you and helping you, encouraging you, building you up. And that is why Peter says, so I fix my eyes on Jesus. The first verse helps us to keep our faith tested. The second one is for the future glory, hope. And the third one is for the eternal glory that is coming towards us. Every day we march on, every day we persevere. We are leaving behind the day, right? We are getting closer and closer to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Now I'm 62 years old. I was 52 and 10 years passed. Now I'm closer to the yeah. Lord's coming than I was 52. Hallelujah. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Every day as we pass by and we meet keep on moving, keep on pursuing. What we are doing is that we are getting closer and closer because we fix our eyes on what is unseen, not on, not on the seen things. Look at, let me read verse, uh, look at verse seven in chapter five, since we are in second Corinthians chapter four, and just look at the second, uh, next chapter, that is chapter five, and look at verse seven. This is the advice for all of us, for for Paul is writing this. He says, we live by faith, mm. not by sight. sight. Yeah. Pastor, what is the secret? You're still happy. <laughs> what is the secret? I'm not having a million dollars in my account, right? Some people may think just because I'm in America, I have a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> not so, right? Yeah, right? Just because you be, no. So our, our, our dependence is not on the money that we have. Our dependence is not on the health that we have. But our dependence is on the Lord Jesus. Amen. Because what is unseen is going to be eternal. And Amen. that is why we have to fix our eyes on the Lord. It, it helps us to have faith in Him and hope in Him. We have to put all our faith, our hope in the Lord. Who is going to come one day to, to take us with Him. Hallelujah. That is the only secret that I know is how to keep on going. <laughs> because you have to focus. You have to focus. Because if you wander, you allow your mind to wander, if your eyes to wander, because the world has so many things to pull you easily down. I have seen people who have put their eyes on the money and then they have just failed miserably. They have forsaken the Lord for money. They have forsaken the Lord for money. It is almost like 
Iscariot. Judas Iscariot, do you know what he did? He went and made a deal to the leaders of the religious sect. He said, okay, what will I get if I show Jesus? They said 30 pieces of silver. He sold the Lord for 30 pieces of silver. A lot of people are doing it even today mm -hmm. for the sake of money. They are forgetting about Jesus, coming to church and worshiping the Lord together, fellowshipping with believers. These are all not important. It's praying in the presence of the Lord. It's not important for them. For them is money, money, money. But they think because money is going to what? Be the answer. Money is not the answer. If money is the answer, all the rich people will be still living. Praise the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. If, 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 if uh, health is the answer, all the gym will lose their business because if you, if you are continually working out and, and, and then you are not dying forever, think about it. No? So being healthy, being rich is not the answer. Being famous is not the answer. One day somebody is so famous, the next day nobody cares. Praise the Lord. That is what the world does. Right? I have seen so many people coming to the uh, limelight so fast and they are called superstars and then what? You cannot find the superstar anymore. <laughs> Is dead and gone. Think about it, okay? So we have to learn to keep our the important things first. The first thing first, that is keep our eyes focused on the Lord. Amen. That is the secret of our faith and our hope. And I thank God for all of us. You know, it's like I'm preaching to the choir. You know <laughs> what I'm talking about, right? Amen. You know exactly what I'm talking about. I know Jesus is the answer. Nothing else matters. Would you just join with me and worship the Lord this morning one more time? Would you just stand in the presence of the Lord? And I'm going to sing some songs and just worship the Lord. Would you raise your hand and just worship the Lord? Yeah. Because our hope is in Him. Our faith is in Him. And our eternal glory is in Him. In Him Hallelujah. we are hidden. Hallelujah. We live by faith, not by sight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You know this song. Glory. Glorify the name. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. 